Saudi Arabia relies on two liquids, water and oil. Oil is considered by many to be the country's most important natural resource, but for the Saudis themselves, water is becoming increasingly valuable. Revenues from oil are rising, allowing skyscrapers to be built at breakneck speed. But water reserves are steadily shrinking, as it turns out they are limited. The end is near and threatens the very existence of the desert kingdom. The main source of fresh water on the peninsula is the Arabian Aquifer, formed 20,000 years ago and the climate in this area was much wetter. It is one of the world's largest aquifers, with water occurring at depths of 100 to 500 and sometimes as much as 2,500 meters. An aquifer is a stratum of closely related, water-permeable, water-saturated sediments with a stratum-like occurrence. When the aquifer comes to the surface, it creates streams and water springs. Aquifers are the custodians of groundwater resources. Saudi Arabia is a desert country with no permanent rivers and lakes and very low rainfall. Aquifers are the main source of water here. Groundwater in deep sandstone aquifers are non-renewable or non-fossil waters. The deep mountain aquifers are mostly of sedimentary origin from sandstone and limestone, extending over thousands of square kilometers with little natural supply. Among these aquifers, the main ones are Sak, Wajid, Tabuk, Minjur, Derma, Wajabiyad, Damam, and others. Since the 1970s, the government has made important efforts to map such aquifers so that wells could be drilled for urban and agricultural use. When intensive modern farming began in Saudi Arabia in the mid-80s, there was a huge amount of water under the desert, 120 cubic miles of 500 cubic kilometers. That would be enough to fill, for example, Lake Erie in the United States. But in recent years, up to 5 cubic miles, 21 cubic kilometers of this water has been pumped to the surface each year for farming use. The Saudis have already used up at least 96 cubic miles of 400 cubic kilometers of their aquifers. Experts estimate that four-fifths of the Saudis' fossil water is gone. This means that one of the greatest of the planet's oldest reserves of fresh water in one of the hottest and driest places has almost been empty in little more than a generation. So why did this happen? From the sky, the landscape of Saudi Arabia is dotted with greenery, the farm fields that have sprung up in the desert thanks to irrigation. Tens of thousands of dairy cows live in huge buildings nearby whose drinking and cooling means are enormous. Until recently, water was thoughtlessly pumped deep from beneath the surface to achieve these wonders. The country decided to feed itself rather than import products from other countries. This decision, however, turned out to have disastrous consequences. In the mid-1980s, Saudi Arabia embarked on an ambitious agricultural plan to grow crops in its desert areas using ancient fossil water. Central irrigation systems were installed in a barren basin in Wadi al-Sirhan in the northwestern part of the country. Water that had been deep underground for thousands of years was now used to grow fruit, vegetables, and wheat. Landowners were allowed to extract water freely from aquifers without restrictions to maintain irrigated fields in the desert. Compounding the situation was the fact that 35% of farmland was irrigated using the traditional flooding method, which consumed more water than drip irrigation or sprinkler systems. This resulted in an average of 5 trillion gallons of water being used annually by the 1990s, enough to drain Lake Erie in just 25 years. The Saudi Arabian Deputy Minister of Agriculture for Research and Development said, Agriculture in our country is the largest water consumer, absorbing 85 to 90 percent of its volume. Of that, almost 80 to 85 percent of it comes from groundwater aquifers. This ill-conceived scheme to turn the desert into wheat fields and blooming gardens had serious consequences. But that's not all in Saudi Arabia. The problem of dwindling water supplies has also been exacerbated by high levels of personal consumption. Urbanization and improved lifestyles led to people using more water for their regular activities. In fact, the average daily per capita water consumption in Saudi Arabia was 266 liters per day, 9 to 6 and 8 cubic meters per year, twice the average for citizens in the European Union. Water resources have not only been depleted at the individual level, the country's economy also has a growing need for water. Industrial water consumption is growing at 7.5% a year and should increase by 50% by 2032. Another problem was the weak institutional capacity and governance reflecting the general characteristics of the public sector in Saudi Arabia. Experts have sounded the alarm that demographic and economic pressures could push Saudi Arabia's water supply to its limits. Natural water resources in parts of the country are in danger of extinction within the next 20 years. As we said earlier, the problem is that the water in the aquifers of Saudi Arabia is not being replenished. Rainfall here averages between 100 and 200 millimeters per year, making groundwater in the area a non-renewable resource. When hydrologists predicted in 2008 that it would only be possible to pump groundwater in 50 years, 
Domestic wheat production had to be stopped. To avoid food shortages, a Saudi agriculture and livestock investment company was created in 2011 to secure food supplies with the equivalent of $800 million. The company invested in the Canadian Wheat Board, which meant that some Canadian grain would be shipped to Saudi Arabia. In addition to Canada, the priority areas for investment in various grains have been Australia and Brazil. The Saudi Arabian government decided to rely almost entirely on imported crops from other countries to feed its population of 30 million people. Outsourcing food production to countries such as Sudan and Ukraine, as well as other countries in South America and Asia, helped Saudi Arabia grow its own food for export back to the kingdom. Local farmers, on the other hand, have been encouraged to engage in alternative agricultural activities, such as growing fruits and vegetables in greenhouses using advanced drip irrigation techniques. By 2014, agricultural imports from Saudi Arabia and the United States had risen to an all-time high. In fact, the country actually imports water supplies from the United States in the form of food, but this has not completely solved the water problem. The kingdom's government has attracted investment in seawater desalination, water distribution, sewage, and wastewater treatment. By 2014, about 50% of drinking water came from desalination, 40% from non-renewable groundwater extraction, and only 10% from surface water in the mountainous southwest. The capital area was supplied with desalinated water pumped from the Persian Gulf 467 kilometers away. Water was provided to domestic consumers almost free of charge. Few towns and permanent water supplies. In Ariad, for example, water was available only once every two and a half days, and in Jeddah only every nine days. In 2019, Saudi Arabia launched a national program called Kagara, which translates as drop from Arabic. Under this program, the country intends to reduce water consumption by about 43% by 2030 to 150 liters per capita per day. In addition, the program will rationalize water sources to better protect natural resources and all aspects of life that depend on water. Today, in 2022, Saudi Arabia is behind only the United States and Canada in per capita water consumption. Saudi Arabia serves as a prime example of how poor water management can have serious consequences for the water sector, especially as climate change is putting pressure on the availability and quality of water resources. However, Saudi Arabia also serves as an example of how water scarcity can be managed by developing desalination plants, expanding water recycling processes and infrastructure, and shifting from domestic agriculture to food outsourcing. The country is doing its best to provide water. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.